with heart palpitations and I thought, what, yeah, that was, oh, I just felt like my body was shutting down. It was basically a year. It took wow. me a year to fight to get to the bottom of what was going on. I was doing saunas at the time when I had breast implants and I, I always felt. The next, next part I wanted to come on is you're sort of training to be a well-being coach. Mm -hmm. What sparked your interest in like training for specifically for that? Because you said it was during COVID, right? Yeah. Where you wanted to make the transition to full time coach, I not just doing your own thing. Yeah, I think it's always been my passion. I think sort of to to learn more about health. I've always sort of been that sort of nerd where I've just been studying all about yeah. health and and especially um, I sort of I was quite ill last year with breast implant illness, and I think that's what triggered me to sort of help others and help other women mm. um, out there. So I think that's when I decided, okay, this is what I want to do. Um, Let's talk about the breast implant illness. Mm -hmm. what, what actually is that? So breast implant illness, um, last year I was, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I started feeling symptoms, things like uh, chronic fatigue, hair loss, literally to the point that I was brushing my hair and I started getting clumps of hair falling out. Um, I remember landing in Dubai at the time. And you know when, when it's that feeling when you've got blocked ears? Mm. And I thought, that's a bit weird. It hasn't shifted when I landed. And I thought, oh, I must, I must look into it. Four months down the line, I felt like, oh, the, my ears are still blocked, which was really bizarre. Really? So I started going to doctors and thinking, guys, my, my ears are still blocked. I feel super tired. Um, yes, I had kids, but I just thought I just f something felt a bit off. Mm. Um, started doing these tests and then came back with it was this was over a period of a year. And it started coming back with things like food intolerances, which I've never had before, a leaky gut, which I've never had, um, anxiety off the scales, uh, heart palpitations. I, I used to wake up with heart palpitations and I thought, scary. Well, yeah, that was I, I just felt like my body was shutting down. Mm. So I went to GP at the time and they said they thought region was perimenopause because the symptoms of BII can be very similar to perimenopause. And they thought, oh, it's, it's perimenopause. Um, go on HRT, which I did for four months, um, started putting the patch. And I thought, this, I just don't feel any no different, no. felt no different. And it wasn't until I spoke to a surgeon in the States where the, he basically straight away sort of said, it's your breast implants. And at the time I thought, yeah, I had two sets, never had a leakage, never had a rupture. Um, and at the time I thought, yeah, I, I, I need to take them eventually out. But I, I was scared how, how it was mm. going to look physically, mm. um, you know, the whole idea of it. I was just used to them. Um, had it for over 14 years, two sets. And then, yeah, the surgeon sort of said, you need to take them off. And I, it wasn't until I came back to the UK and I spoke to a, a, an amazing surgeon in the UK. And he said, look, these were my symptoms. And he said, yeah, let's take them out. And I thought, it's a gamble, it's a big gamble, but I thought, okay, I'm gonna take them out. And as soon as I took them out, I remember on the theater, on the bed theater, I started sweating like I've never sweated before. And I thought I was being ladylike, I've never sweated. Mm. And it was literally Your the breast, in, yeah, it yeah. was the body sort of just saying, I'm free now, I'm mm. just, but yeah, I mean, it, it's not for every woman. And, uh, and I think the important message here is to, is to listen to that gut feel. Mm -hmm. If you think something's off, try and seek medical advice and try and look into, into so it. How, how long before the symptoms started to and I think it the took, surgeon telling It you? was basically a year. It took wow. me a year to okay. fight to get to the bottom of what was going on with me. So that's quite scary. Yeah. A lot of people go through the same thing. Exactly. And have a lot worse symptoms. Exactly. Than you, yeah. And it started really small. It was the chronic fatigue originally. Yeah. It, it was just a bit like. Which, which could be anything. Exactly. Yeah. And it was by the end of it, by the end of the year, it was so bad that um, even doing blood tests, I could, they couldn't get blood out of my system because I was so severely de dehydrated. Mm -hmm. And I was drinking loads of water. It was just your body completely That's shutting crazy. down. So, so what is it? Is it the fact that there's something foreign in your body for a long period of time? It's just like. Yeah. This needs to get so, out now and it reacts So the to surgeon it. in the States showed me the implant on um, uh, sort of on top of a tissue paper. Right. And with no leakage or rupture, this tissue paper after 24 hours is completely wet. And you can actually do that with wow. liquid coming out of it. So imagine that in your lymph nodes. It's just, it's, it's, it's a recipe for disasters. But some women, uh, they don't have the symptoms and mm. some women don't suffer from breast implant illness. They can go through the whole life with having no sort of symptoms. But my body was just sort of 
shutting down in, in your experience Crazy. since then so because obviously your knowledge of it would have grown exponentially mm -hmm. how have you found that a lot of women have those similar symptoms that they maybe wouldn't have diagnosed yeah, until they seen exactly. your story and gone wow that's I know I, I, I like I, uh, yeah I, I and I think the UK is still is still a bit slow with things like that but mm. I think in the US they're much more on it um, and I think it's the UK that's just starting to be uh, the aware awareness of it is starting which is great but I think there's we still have a way a, to do. a way long mm. a long way ahead mm -hmm. so what lessons have you learned from that journey because I know it's it's quite different but with my ADHD if we're comparing mm -hmm. it to not knowing what was wrong with me and yeah. being super tired all the time, failing in school, mm -hmm. all these different things really messed in my head. And I was like, what is it? Like, why yeah. am I, yeah. like, what's going on? How, how was that for the year? Yeah. Especially with your thing being like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I know there's something wrong. I can't figure this out. Yeah. How was that for you mentally? You do, you start questioning yourself, don't you? Do. You do, you're you like, am I weird? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and everyone was like, there's nothing wrong with you. And I'm like, there is something wrong with me. I can yeah. feel it, there's something off. Uh, and the more sort of, you know, I saw so many doctors and so many sort of, it's just because the awareness is not there. And I think as long as people know of it, then it becomes easier. Um, it's like perimenopause and menopause now, you know, it's it's now a much talked subject mm. because people are more aware of it. And ADHD, you know, I think it's important to sort of always talk about and communicate on that. Completely agree. Um, but yeah. If you could look back um what, how long ago did you get them did you, you said 14 so years, i had right? two sets uh, you, you you you're meant to sort of change them every seven years which i did right. um so i had them when i was really young like late 20s yeah. um but yeah i had two sets changed them uh after the seven years and then and then that it wasn't until last year that I started having the symptoms if you could look back so that's, i'm not sure how long that is now time wise would you go and do it again in your late 20s? It's hard because I loved having them. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to lie. I loved having them. I loved how they looked. Um, would I have them again? Probably not. But, you know, it's 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 just, you know, I'm not... I, it, I think in every lesson you have to learn from it. And, mm. it, you know, it, it did it for a reason. And, you know, mm. at least I got to the bottom of it. I yeah, think you've sure. got to have always have silver Which, lining. If you don't mind me asking, was it the pressure of being in the modeling industry that made you want to do it or did you always want to have them done? I guess pressure as well. Okay. I think it's just keeping up with the Joneses and mm -hmm. just having that unrealistic standard of perfection, um, which, you know, a lot of models do yeah. It's in that industry. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I guess uh, both. Yeah. Okay. What advice would you give to... I, I want to stay on that modeling point. I know we talked briefly about modeling earlier. What advice would you give to young people today who are looking to get into the modeling industry who might be feeling the pressures of having to look a certain way from social media? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get a lot of girls sort of send me messages now. It's just, like I said, you've got to be thick skinned. There's going to be a lot of rejection. Um, and it's just whether you really want to do it, you mm. know, because there's so many now jobs that you can still be, you know, being creative and working on your image and stuff and not being modeling. But I think it's just make sure that you, you know, you're prepared to a lot of rejection mm. and don't take it personally. And lastly, what, what would you like to give advice wise to people looking to get breast implants who may be in their late 20s being like, this is going to be wicked. Would you advise and be like, listen, it could go wrong here or would you do? Go and just say, listen, if you want them, go do it. I think go with your gut feel. I think it's very hard. I still have girlfriends now that they, they've got the breast implants and they just refuse to see that it's going to, you know, do damage. But mm. I think it's it's such a gamble. I think it's, it's, I think you've got to go with your gut. I think the best advice I could give is if, if someone is thinking of doing it, either make sure that you're, you've got an amazing surgeon or just don't do it. It's just, is it worth it? I don't know, mm. you know, but it's very hard for me to say that because I've done it. So it's, yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah. It's so, a 50-50. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it now. Yeah. So. Post-surgery, did you make any significant changes to your lifestyle? Did you make any, 
you know, eating differently, being more hydrated, more active, or was that kind of just doing the exact same things you were doing before, but after surgery, did you feel like you needed to change things up? I did because I, I, I discovered after, you know, it takes sort of two years for the silicon to get rid of the body, to, for the body to get rid mm -hmm. of the silicon. So it's things like you've got to detox your liver, um, you know, it's things like that that you've got to really right, hone see, in yeah. with diet, daily exercise, things like sauna to detox your your toxins, things which I didn't know before. If you do breast implant, if you've got breast implant illness and you're doing saunas, it makes the whole symptoms worse, which I didn't know. Right. So I, I was doing saunas at the time when I had breast implants and I, I was felt I felt super tired after. I felt like my symptoms got even worse. And it's it's now a link between breast implant illness and sauna. So it's it's like, you know, it's a water bottle. It's the same idea of a w plastic water bottle on the heat. Mm. You know, it's not a good combination. So I read an article and you were saying about Ayurveda. Did you start mm. Ayurveda after your surgery? I always loved that? Ayurveda before, right. but I think it was after because it was, you know, it's bringing back the body into homeostasis. It's all about rebalancing the body, which I love the concept of it. And I know that my body needed the balance again. Mm. So that's when I started um, speaking to a lot of practitioners on the on the field. And, and, you know, I just loved having the herbs and more the natural state of it all. For those that don't know, watching and listening to this, mm -hmm. explain roughly what, what the process is. So Ayurveda is all about rebalancing the body. Okay. Um, it's about bringing the body back into homeostasis. It was created in India around sort of 3000 years ago. And it means the balance of life. Um, and it's, it's very much, you know, it, it's sort of, a, it's a holistic approach. Mm -hmm designed to help people sort of lead a healthier, longer life and a balanced life. I think the the, ba the key here is the balance. Okay. Does it's, it include yoga? Yeah, it can do. Yeah, that. it can do. Um, it's, it's all about the sort of holistic in general. So right, the, the, your entire life in general was led yeah, through this process exactly, of... Okay, balance. Oh, yeah, exactly. Balance. How does that look for you personally, specifically? What, what does that consist of? So it's, you know, things like, I think if you're getting into Ayurveda, you've got a, things like one invest in a tongue scraper every okay. morning just tongue scraper tongue is really scraper. good yeah. um it's all about you know chewing your food slowly uh and more because it's very good for digestion um starting your day with water um things like that so okay. yeah little, 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 not huge yeah, differences, little, no, little things. things yeah exactly okay yeah i watched I, a tv program about these people in japan and they will make them eat with chopsticks oh, to yeah. make them eat so slower. slower. To, that's yeah. to lose weight yeah. and your body can't process it yeah. properly, right? You, I think you're meant to chew your food for like 32 times before you swallow it. It's right. something, I mean, it's it's full on. <laughs> I don't do that. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I inhale I don't it and do it's that. gone. But it's, yeah, it's just being more mindful, I guess, isn't it? It's just stopping and making sure that you chew that food. Coming, <laughs> coming to diet, you sort of, all your work's done under three pillars from yeah. what I saw on your website. You have diet, movement mindset i love to start on diet and debunk all three of them what can people do for their diet not just for their mental health but also for their well-being like what are some of the most effective quick changes mm -hmm. that people can make where they could start right now if they wanted to i think when people ask me this i think it's it's really important i would say to start small whether it's you know because it's you've got to um do your habits that can that can translate into your life so it's whether you know you've got sort of a diet coke in the more um, sort of in the day just swap that diet coke with something healthy mm. it's just doing small swaps um and that eventually that can build up to healthier habits T i compounds. think it's yeah exactly i think it's really you know and it's things like researching different food groups um like you know fatty fish or le leafy greens and that their benefits it's things like that just being a bit more mindful of it and just doing small swaps throughout the day i think that makes it into a more long-term sort of habit mm. i saw something really interesting that you did is a lot of people that follow you will ask for advice on nutrition and you'll end up cooking meals mm -hmm. for them and to swap certain things that was a really cool idea that you're cooking stuff for yourself that yeah you know that other people want to do as well yeah i, I, really I always idea. do that mm. even like when i'm shooting with the team and stuff you know yeah. i always make sure that they're they're having a good lunch and things like that so yeah, yeah. i live and breathe what i preach so yeah i do love doing I love that. that i love cooking in general on your website, you had a quote, which I loved. I love my quotes. I love my studies, <laughs> yeah. as Joe knows. Yeah. And you said, create healthy habits, not restrictions. Yeah. And I loved that. And I, it was literally the first thing I saw and I was like, 
always stuck with me since I read it a week ago. What are your sort of healthy habits around eating? Which do you try and implement into yours and your family's life? I think healthy habits are so important. I think day to day, um, I think routine and mindset create healthy habits. Um, in terms of, I think it's it's coming back to the habits again. It's just making sure that, you know, I don't have chocolate or sweets in the house and things like that where you'd end up sort of making bad choices. Um, it's, it's eating seasonal if I can, um, whenever I can, organic if I can, um, making sure I, I cook meals from scratch, mm. um, just no limit processed food as much as I can. Yeah. Just coming back to the basics, I guess. Do you find cooking helps you with your mental health? It does. It's amazing. Cooking's I mean, great, I put the it? music on, you know, yeah. it's quite meditative. <laughs> you sort of zone out. But yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Do you it. try and cook every day? I do, yeah. So this I is do. something I'm trying to do more is I'm not the best cook. I've actually gotten better. I'm a big barbecue are guy. You? I like to barbecue. You? Yeah. I can't really I can't I do love much else. Food, yeah. In the UK uh, it's a bit different though. Yeah, it's a bit <laughs> yeah. different. Maybe like once once yeah. a week max you could do that with the sun. Yeah. But I find it so therapeutic. I don't yeah. know what it is about cooking. You just said it then. When you put the music on, you're just cooking. You I think out, I think because you? you kind of just you don't think about anything else. Yeah. You're focused on trying to make something yeah. good. Yeah. And you're you're marinating it. It's a process. And then yeah. when it's done, you sit down. It's such a rewarding feeling. Yeah. And I actually think cooking's helped me massively with my mental health. Yeah. Is I suffer really badly with anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, that cup stems from my ADHD. Mm -hmm. And my head is such a mess. Like the way I sort of see my head is if you just put a loose coin mm -hmm. in a washing machine and it's just ping, 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 ping everywhere. Idea, idea. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I didn't do this. Uh, it's mm -hmm. so erratic. And I feel like when I'm cooking or when I'm in the gym or playing sport, I have two hours of just yeah silence yeah. when I'm focusing on something. Yeah. Or when I'm doing this and you're trying to focus on question preparation and something else it's the nicest thing for me because i can't get silence and cooking is just one of those things i love people to just even if you're rubbish at it follow your page follow the steps that you do and it's it's such a rewarding thing mm -hmm. and something i feel like will be massive soon in terms of the mental health space yeah mm -hmm. what's your sort of view on cooking going forward in the mental health space whether it's just for kids helping kids do you reckon that would be something that could I, I, be big yeah i hope so and I, i'd love to see things like you know jamie oliver's doing an amazing job in that yeah um you know see that more in schools you know they should always have like cooking classes and stuff like that it's mm. so good for them um but i think you're right i think it's you know it's it, it's sort of meditative meditative it's sort of finishing that task so you focus on the task but it's quite enjoyable at it as well so, so it's rewarding yeah, yeah super it rewarding annoying when you yeah. do it wrong though. it's <laughs> bad when you burn it <laughs> and but the yeah. chicken you're like can't believe this yeah <laughs> ruin my evening yeah, yeah. <laughs> no it's great this hi guys i hope you enjoyed part two first and foremost if you are across youtube make sure you like and subscribe and do comment below it really really helps the channel out loads here's what you can expect in part three enjoy i think pilates is an amazing low impact sort of exercise as you know i mean it is it gives amazing results physically but also mentally because it's the modeling industry you know how i would look after and i'm so glad i did it because now i don't i, I, I don't look back at it it's those meaningful moments in life and it's just that daily routine i think that makes me the happiest mm. it's just the smallest things